Hi, this is Natalie. Thank you for listening to Crossroads Church, where we are bringing a real God to real people. I believe you'll be inspired by today's message. So we're talking about maturity. Uh, we're going to continue this series, the, the Circle Perspective, where we're talking about the fact that God is always working in your life, but most of the time, you can't see it or understand it. You only get to understand it looking backwards. Life is lived forward, but we only understand it looking backwards. So our only option right now is to live in faith that God is working in our lives, even though we can't see it or understand it. So we've been talking about the patterns, you know, uh, that kind of go through life, uh, uh, the life of faith, the patterns. And we're going to wrap it up today talking about the final stage kind of in these circles that God leads us in. But it got me thinking about is that we've all got people in our lives that as we look at them right now, we go, man, they need to grow up. (laughs) Right? Some of you got that brother. He's still with your parents. Some of you are that brother. Still with the parents, 35 years old. Xbox, yeah, that's what Mr. Marcus says. You're like, man, they need to grow up. And sometimes we see people are like, what are they thinking? And, and, and it's, you know, because here's the thing, like when, when you mature, you start to realize, well, this is what's acceptable. What's tricky about it is you had some things you needed to learn to grow up, right? And other people have different things they need to learn to grow up because we all have a bunch of different life experiences. And so you may have grown up in one area, but not grown up in another. And here's the thing. There's all sorts of areas of our life where we have to grow up. We all have to grow up physically, right? We have to grow up emotionally. When my daughter breaks down crying because somebody won't give her a toy, I say, sweetheart, that's not how you can act as an adult. Except we watch the news every night. (laughs) And there are people. I want to my toys. It's not fair. (laughs) Right? But maturity says, and that's those the people who say, well, you need to grow up. This life isn't fair. Don't you know this? And here's the thing. Maturity is a tricky thing. Because how do you know when you're mature? (laughs) We're going to talk about that today. We've been looking at this circle perspective, right? And we've been looking based on this verse, Psalm 23, where it says, the Lord is my shepherd and he's guiding us and he's leading us. And there's this word, the Lord is my shepherd. It says, he leads me in paths of righteousness. But the the Hebrew word for that is magol and it means paths that are made of circles. He leads us in paths made of circles of righteousness. And and we've seen in our lives, you've seen it probably in your life, that you, you find yourself keep coming back to certain themes, certain places maybe. You go, oh, I'll never go back to that place again. And here you are again, you're back. You go, oh, I never was going to go back here. Certain time frames where you keep coming back around and you're like, there's these certain themes that just keep coming up in your life and we try and run from them, but they keep coming back. And that's, I believe, is, is how God is leading us. Um, this is kind of the culmination of this whole series, but the idea is basically, Carl Jung said it this way. He said, there is no linear evolution of the soul. There is only circumambulation. Big word. What that means is, 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 is there's just this growing out beyond what you are at the core of who you are. Because here's the thing. God made you who you are, and he likes the way he made you. He just wants the, perfect, the perfected version of it. And we all have within us this core sense of, like this core call to be all that we can be. And God's placed in you this, this drive to be something. And that's why we've been talking about this journey we've been on. So we all start from this place Right here, this is you, right? And, and every heroic journey, every journey that we love to read stories about, all the heroes, Luke Skywalker, Frodo Baggins, they, their journeys all follow this. And there's something deep within us that goes, man, that's, that story, that epic story, something where that resonates in my life. And the reason that is, is because this is the pattern that God has put into place. And so we've been, I'm going to re- recap real quick the pattern we've been going over. We all start from a place of living out of a need of security, connection, and control. It's our biggest hopes and dreams are all wrapped up in trying to get security for ourselves our family, financial, emotional, relational security, a sense of connection with others. We want to feel connected, known, seen, understood, valued. And we want to feel a sense that we have some say over our lives. Control, right? And that's the biggest, that's the hope of your source of your biggest hopes and dreams. Everything you're looking for in life, all your biggest hopes and dreams have to do with security, connection, and control. And here's the thing. It's also the source of your biggest fears. So your greatest hopes and dreams are directly connected to your greatest fears. If you're wondering why you're so afraid and angry, it's because something is threatening your biggest hopes and dreams. 
Okay, I wrote a whole book on that. Won't go into that. But here's the thing. Jesus says, look, guys, I know you need security, connection, and control. Matthew 6, he says this. I get it. I made you. I know what you need. You're worried about not getting it. But here's the thing. If you want those things, don't seek those things. This is weird Zen thing, Jesus said. He's like, don't look at the ball. If you want the ball, don't look at the ball, right? What? What does that mean? He says, seek first the kingdom of God. If you want those things, you got to start by seeking the right thing. And you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those things you're really looking for, the security, connection, and control, they'll be given to you as well. But it starts by seeking the right thing. And so here's what the seeking looks like. He places something deep in you that says, there's more in you than you think there is. And every one of us at any phase of our lives, we look around and we may have a great job, great family, love our kids, but go, you know, there's more in me than this. I've got some skills, talents, abilities. There's more in me than this. Some of you, man, you're trying to break free from an addiction. And every time you shoot up or smoke up or whatever you do, you go, I'm better than this. I know I'm better than this, but it's got this hold on you. Jesus has put this call within you to say, hey, you can be more than you think you are right now. In fact, First John says this, it says, right now we are the sons and daughters of God, but it has not yet been revealed what we will be. So we talked about how you never sacrifice what you can be for what you are now. And if you stay where you are right now saying, well, this is good enough, it's uncomfortable to move forward, or I, I, wanna, I like myself the way I am, you're never going to be all you could be because right now you're the sons and daughters of God. Yes, right now in Christ, you are forgiven of your sins, but there's so much more than just forgiveness of sins. There's an abundant life out there for you. So he says, you've got this call and all of a sudden something happens that thrusts you into the action. And you go, oh, oh my gosh, I've got to make a decision. Like God is calling me to this and, you, and you've got to step out. And it requires courage and you have to have the courage to go towards the thing you fear. This is all, I've covered this over the last three series, uh, three messages. So if you, have, if you want to hear this in, in depth, uh, go ahead and download the app and you can get that. I'm blowing through this here right now. Eventually, we realize we need to step forward and a guide shows up. And our guide is the Holy Spirit. Jesus didn't send us out to go figure it out on our own. He said, hey, when I'm leaving the earth, I'm going to send somebody who's going to guide you in all truth. And we talked two weeks ago about the fact that there's no formula for life. There's only revelation. And we want a formula. Well, tell me what I need to do. X, Y, Z, A, B, C. Oh, 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 I'm a success. And we read books about how to be a success. And then we go, how come I'm not quite as much of a success as the guy that wrote that book? Well, because that person had a unique journey. He doesn't have the gifts, skills, and abilities. He doesn't have your background. You're different. So there's no formula, but there is revelation of truth. And the Holy Spirit is here to guide you in your unique journey on where you're supposed to go and what maturity looks like to you. It's good. It's real good. But you have to seek him not a formula. And religion's a formula. Religion is, tell me what I need to do so I can make God happy, but don't actually have to talk to him. And God's like, it don't work that way. You and me, we need to have an ongoing conversation about how to live your life because you're special and unique and you need to know how to live in a certain way. So he speaks to us. The Holy speaks Spirit speaks through two things. The Logos, which is, is the written word of God, and he speaks through what's called the Rama word, which is the spoken word that comes, uh, sometimes it comes through people speaking into your life, but those two line up. The written word and the spoken word will always line up. God will never ask you to do something that's not in the Bible, right? So the guide comes along, but eventually you just got to commit. You got to commit to the path. And you say, well, I don't know where to go. I don't know how to get there. That's fine. Just commit to the path and the way will open to you. There are some things in life you can't Google, You've just got to commit to it. Am I going to get my job back? <laughs> Lord, I need to know I'm going to get my job back. I'm going to Google it. Google doesn't have the answers. When's the pandemic going to be over? No answers. You, do, you don't know. You just have to step into the unknown, into the darkness and say, well, I don't know what the future holds, but I know who holds the future and God's guiding me and leading me. So I'm going to walk forward into the unknown. You step into the threshold and here's what happens. We talked about this last week. Challenges emerge. You have to face difficulties and struggles. And then we talked about the idea of anti-fragility, that you're made to grow stronger through challenges. Literally, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. And then we all get to a point in the journey where we look around and go, God, this is not what I thought you looked like. But this, here's the thing. We're going to talk today about where this is all going. Because there's, there, there's something that comes from this. There's something that emerges out of this. Oh my gosh, I just got a fingerprint on the screen. It's going to drive me insane. 
There's something that emerges from this, from the journey. And what emerges is you come out growing in your walk with God in maturity. And here's the thing. Healthy things always grow. So one of the keys of maturity is, are you growing and changing? If you're the same person, the way you think, the way you act, now, as you were 10 years ago, there may be something unhealthy going on in your life. With a baby, with a kid, we, they have these growth things. You bring your kid in and they say, oh, your child is in the 10th percentile of growth or whatever, in the 50th percentile. And you're like, okay, so you're, my child's growth is on track. But if you see a five-year-old who still can't walk, something's not healthy and we need to get it healthy. And the same in your life is the case in your spiritual walk. If you believe the same thing about God as you did 10 years ago, I'm worried for you. If you're acting out of that belief the same way you were 10 years ago, I'm worried for you because healthy things grow. And if you're not growing in some way, I would say there's probably something in unhealthy going on in your life that needs to be addressed. And that's the process that God is working through and making you into who he wants you to be. There's this verse where the Apostle Paul says this. He says, listen, actually, Pastor Marcus quoted it right when he stood up here a second ago. He said, therefore, dear friends, as you've always obeyed, not only my presence, he's writing to a people that are away from him. He says, now more in my absence, this is what I need you to do. I need you to continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Now, this is a tricky verse because you say, well, I thought I was already saved if I accepted Christ. Yes, you are saved. You're saved from the penalty of your sins. But here's the thing. There's way more than just living free from the penalty of your sins. God has an abundant life for you. And he's saying the way you get there is you don't just settle for where you are. He says, you've got to continue to work out this faith thing, trusting that God's actually working in you even when you can't see him. And you do it with fear and trembling, which means humility. Because God is working in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Now, the challenge I have this morning is I have basically three sermons to give you that I'm going to try and compress into one. I could unpack this, but here's the thing about this. This is a powerful line right here because he's saying that when you accept the spirit of, of God within your heart, he actually places his desires in you. And oftentimes, as the longer you walk with him, the thing you want most is actually the thing he wants for you. That's in maturity, right? That's what maturity looks like. But the crazy thing about this verse is we quote this verse a lot, but we skip what came before it. And this is where Paul, he talks about, he says, look, if you want an example of what maturity looks like, let me show you what maturity looks like. He says this, in humility, this is what, you, this is what maturity looks like. Value others above yourselves. Don't look to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Now, this is, this is intense right here because Jesus was God in the flesh. He could have, at the snap of his fingers, when they were hanging him up on the cross, he could have said, I'm done. Wipe them all out. <laughs> but instead, he just hung there on the cross and he paid the penalty for our sins. And that is what a picture of true maturity is. True maturity is realizing your strength, but not having to use it to get your own way. And instead, surrendering your life for the way to help others. He says, and this is be like Jesus. He was very nature God, but he didn't consider equality with God something he would use to his own advantage. So here's what he did though. He says, rather, he made himself nothing. God of the universe came down and said, I'm going to surrender my will to you little petty people's wills. And he did. By taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even to death on a cross. But here's the thing. This is what's powerful about it. Jesus sets the example for us. Therefore, because he was willing to humble himself, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name. That the name of Jesus, every knee would bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess and tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And then he says, so you guys, that's how you work out your own salvation. You work it out by humbling yourself and realizing that true maturity is moving towards humility. The way up is down. 
We love growth. I love to see growth in trees. All these spring trees are popping out and we're like, oh, the tree is growing, but here's the thing. There's a growth that's way more important than this growth and it's the growth right here, the depth of the roots. And you've seen trees that have toppled over because their roots weren't strong enough when the winds came blowing. And God is saying, hey, listen, I know you want to grow and I know you want evidence that you're growing, but here's the thing. A lot of the growth you're not going to see because it's beneath the surface because I'm putting your roots really deep because I need you to be strong and I need you to be a, a mature tree. And these mature trees, man, when we see them, when we know them, we're like, man, that tree has been standing there for hundreds of years. But it's not because its roots are just like this. It's because the roots are super, super deep. And a lot of times in our lives, man, we just want to grow. We want to grow. We want to grow in the Lord. And the Lord's like, okay, but you're not going to like the way the growth's going to look because you're not going to see a lot of the growth because it's going to be under the surface. It's going to be going deeper. There's a book I read a few years ago. It's called The Critical Journey. It changed, it just blew my mind. So I want to share it with you guys. I've shared it before. But this, this is kind of, the, the book is about the, the, the stages in the life of faith. And she, this lady, Janet Hagerberg, she basically broke it down to saying that in a Christian walk, in a walk of faith, this is what the journey looks like. Interestingly enough, it's a circle. The circle of perspective we've been talking about. It starts with a recognition of God. You're living your life and all of a sudden you realize, whoa, God exists and he has a plan for my life. And you come to Jesus and you surrender your life and you're just super excited. But the, the, the challenging part is you're like, well, I'm not worthy of this. And you're like, exactly, you're not worthy of it. But Jesus is the one who made you worthy of it. And when you come to recognition of God, it's this place of just this excitement. And you're realizing, wow, God really does love me. And what happens then, the next natural phase is you get locked in into what's called the life of discipleship. This is where you start to understand that God's rules that he put out there are actually a framework for how to live in harmony with the seen and the unseen reality of this existence. So we realize, oh, these rules are actually for my good. And shoot, if I would have known that, I wouldn't have messed up my life so bad. I wouldn't have had so much pain. And maybe I could have avoided that pain over there and done this because you're learning the framework. And this is why it's really important during this time. You get in church all the time. Whenever the doors are open, you get in there and you learn the Bible because, man, you've been living your way and it's brought you a lot of pain and suffering that, that was unnecessary suffering. But God's order, he brings, there's, there, there's some necessary suffering, but there's a lot of pain in life we can avoid because we just didn't know that God's order worked this way. So you get in this framework, but here's the thing. Eventually, you start, you start realizing, man, God's put some gifts and abilities in me. I need to start using them. And you start serving with those gifts and abilities. And you start using those to serve people around you, and you get active with that. And eventually, you come to what's called the journey inward. And this is where you... You've been living your Christian walk for a while. You've been serving at church, but you've still got some hang-ups. You just can't get over. And you go, why am I still so angry? And why can't I beat, you know, this fear that I just have all the time? And, and the journey inward is where things start to get a little bit dark in the walk with God because you go, man, why is there so much darkness in me I can't seem to overcome? I'm frustrated. And the next step is what's called the wall. Now, before I go on to the wall, let me talk about this real quick. This is not a checklist for you to go, oh, oh, I need to jump to here to here. This is how the life of faith naturally unfolds. And from each of these stages, you're going to have a challenge, right? Some of you right now, you've just come into recognition of God. And here's the thing. You need to not keep doing what you've been doing. You need to get in church as much as you can because you need to grow in your faith and you need this life of discipleship. Some of you have been sitting under the word of God and in church so long that you are like scripture and Bible obese. You are full of the Bible. You can quote a passage and verse for everything, but you're stagnant and you know it. And here's why. Because you haven't been serving. Because the, the next phase is you take what you've learned and you begin to use it. And, and here's the thing. We've all met people that have great theories they're knowledgeable and super like, I have a theory about everything. And we're like, yeah, but you're a horrible person to live with. <laughs> because here's the thing. We're going to look at a verse in a second. Look, look, look at this verse. It says this. This is a weird verse in, in, in 1 Corinthians where Paul says, we, we know we, now about food sacrifice to idols. And we lose what the context of this verse is because he starts talking about food sacrifice to idols, which I don't have time to go into today. But maybe if you hit me up afterwards, I'll share what it means, okay? But... He says, look, we know that we all possess knowledge, but knowledge puffs up while love builds up. 
And this is, I think this verse gets lost. This is a picture of what maturity looks like, but it gets lost because it's got this weird thing where he's talking about food sacrifice to idols that was very contextual to the Corinthians. But here's the bottom line of this verse. He says, look, when you get a lot of knowledge, it puffs you up. It makes you cocky and arrogant. You know, we have more knowledge available to us than anybody in the history of the world has had. And you know what else we have more of? Pride. And it doesn't go well. Well, we're smart now. We're not like those people that live back in the Middle Ages that were afraid of weird things. We've got science. Okay. And thank God for science. But science doesn't have the answer for everything. In fact, science gets it wrong a lot of times. Remember when Pluto was a planet? Anyway, they've, they've de Pluto got demoted. It's not a planet anymore. Anyway, <laughs> science changes because we, know and we don't know everything. And so we're learning. So you say, well, I trust science. Well, which science? Science from 10 years ago, science from now, or science from 10 years from now? Right. What you're actually saying is you trust the limits of man's current knowledge. Anyways, we won't go into that. But here's the thing. Knowledge can make you cocky. And you may, and, 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 but here, love builds up. And this is where this journey is going, okay? And this is why I went to this. But here's the thing. You come to the productive life and you start serving. Sometimes you're stuck in life of discipleship. And when you start actually working with people, you realize, oh, wow, all this stuff up there that I thought was right is actually not right because what's most important is how I love people. And I've met some people that have a lot of Bible, but they, they're not working with anyone. They're just arrogant, puffed up people who have a bunch of knowledge. But here's what happens at the wall. You may not see any growth this way, but if you'll stay in faith, you'll start to see growth this way. Amen. The real important growth. And here's the thing. This wall is very uncomfortable because Jesus isn't coming through as your superhero anymore. Sometimes he lets people die around you. Sometimes he, makes, he, he causes the disease to stay. You're like, God, you're supposed to heal me. And he's not healing you. And he's not healing the people around you. And you're crying out to him and you do get nothing. You get no feeling of who he is. And here's the thing. The tendency is to jump back to one of the earlier stages. Well, if I just read my Bible and pray harder. Arr! Well, if I just serve my brains out, I won't have to think about how miserable I am with God and his disappointment in my life. And we get to this phase, but here's the thing. Eventually we merge on the other side and we start to realize God is nothing like I thought he was. But I trust him. And I surrender to his plan. And then you start to walk out of the life of love. But here's the really interesting thing. You have a whole new perspective on God. And then the cycle starts all over again. You recognize God in a whole new way. Oh, that's what God looks like. And you still don't have it all together, right? But the cycle continues. And here's the thing. That's what maturity looks like. This is, this is what maturity looks like when Paul is saying this. He says, listen, guys, knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. And those who think they know something, they don't really know as they ought to know. Those are the signs of maturity. Here, here here's a sign. First of all, recognize that once you know something, you forget what it's like to not know it. We go around going, they need to grow up. And you're like, well, maybe they just don't know. You don't know what you don't know. And maybe the one that needs to grow up is actually you. It leads to pride. Because once you know, so I heard somebody say it this way, the curse of knowledge must be constantly compensated for continually. It's so easy to forget once you know something, what it's like to not know it. And you're looking at somebody and you're frustrated with them for the way they're acting. And you go, what's wrong with them? There's a little girl in my, my daughter's school. And she's, she says these insane things. Like she told my daughter that her dad discovered an underwater city. And I'm like, Elise, that kid's full of crap. Like, don't listen to her. <laughs> and she's always, this kid's always emotionally manipulating my daughter. My daughter so wants to be her friend. And Emily and I, I was like, this little kid, this little punk kid, I'm going to show her what's up. We met her mom the other day, and her mom started to tell us that this five-year-old kid has some sort of rheumatoid arthritis that's crushing pain on her little five-year-old body all the time. And as I finally looked at the kid, I could see she limps around all the time. And I just started crying. I'm like, I'm such an idiot. I'm such an arrogant. I'm always trying to protect my own. 
right? And it makes sense that this girl who, who she, feel, she physically can't keep up with my daughter. If you've seen my daughter running around here like a bat out of hell, she's like, she can't physically keep up with her. So she emotionally uses these emotional manipulation tactics because that's what all humans do. We all want to be seen as valued and, and, and respected. But here's the thing. That the, I just got it wrong. And I'm like, Lord, forgive me. Here's this poor little five-year-old kid who's in constant pain. And I was evaluating her because she was affecting my daughter. And I got it wrong. And there's just this thing, like, humility opens the door, man. This week, uh, I had a guy, my dad and I bought some land out in Curva. We're going to start a retreat center for missionaries and pastors. And um, I'm like way in over my head. I have no clue what we're doing. It's like just totally overwhelming. Um, but I've been having a lot of people coming out and consulting with us. Casey was one of them. But I had a guy this week came out, and uh, he was so cocky. He was like, well, no, no. Finally, I said, stop, man. I was like, hold up. I mean, he was belittling me, and I was just, I was finding myself getting angry at him. I'm like, okay, this is not going to go well if I keep getting angry at this guy. I said, I said, man, listen, I have no clue what I'm doing. We're in way over our head. I've never developed land. I need help from somebody like you. And the dude turned like that, and he became so nice. And all of a sudden, he was like, oh, let me help you, man. I was like, I just minutes earlier, it was a total jackass, right? <laughs> but as soon as I admitted my vulnerability and my need that I don't know what I'm doing... He was willing to come alongside and go, oh, then let me show you how to get there. But he, isn't that what we all do? Yeah. I can do this on my own. I'll show you. You ever notice it's the little kids that want to tell you how mature they are? Dad, look how big I am. Yes, sweetheart. <laughs> and that's all of us, right? We're running around trying to show people how big and mature we are, but, but that's not the path. Way up is down. We humble ourselves and make ourselves of no reputation, and then all of a sudden people start coming on board. But you have to be willing to admit you don't know anything, which leads to number two, which is the more you truly know, the more you realize how little you actually know. And that's humility. And those are the people that are worth following. One of the things I joke about Pastor Marcus is I'll be like, what are we doing? He's like, I have no clue. And I'm like, I can follow a man like that. That's a man humble enough to know I'm just trying to follow God the best I can. I got a plan. Don't know really what we're doing. But I'll follow somebody like that because that's what you follow is humility. But here's the thing. You've got to, first of all, take down the pride and the arrogance that says, I know what I'm doing. I'm mature. Because here's the thing. Mature people, this is really important, okay? Maturity transcends and includes. I had a guy recently, he told me, he's like, I'll never move back to Texas. I was like, why not? He's like, because I'm enlightened now. I was like, I have never heard an enlightened person say they're enlightened. I actually think you're arrogant. He's like, I know things now that I didn't know before. And I'm like, dude, you're still a moron. Like, <laughs> because here's the thing. If you're truly enlightened, you go to the next level, but you don't belittle those who are still at that other level because you realize you needed that step. It's like a staircase. You needed that step to get to where you are today. And you go, and sometimes we belittle our past or where we came from. And we go, man, I don't want to talk about that part of the journey. Hey, but here's the thing. You wouldn't be here today without that. So you don't belittle it. You just thank God you're not there anymore. But you transcend and then you include. You say, wow, wish we could have done it another way, but here we are. And here's the thing. The people that are still working their way up that staircase, you don't belittle them for still working their way up that staircase. Because maturity transcends and includes. And that's what true maturity looks like. True maturity is humility. And here's what it ultimately is. Some of you right now, you're at the wall. Man, solidarity. I'm there can't tell you how many times I've wanted to throw in the towel and just go start a taco stand in the last few months. I'm like, I'm out of ministry. I'm never going to do this again. You stay in the walk, man, because God's doing something in your life. And you stay in at the wall, if you're in the wall, because here's the thing. He's working you to will and to accomplish the purposes that he has for you. He hasn't forgotten you. He's walking with you. He's working right now. And you'll understand what was going on when you look back. But in the meantime, stay faithful to what's right in front of you. That's the journey. Keep that perspective that God's working right here. He's working. You keep that perspective, and man, it'll, it, it'll, it'll give you meaning. And it'll give you purpose in your life. You guys receive that? Yeah. All right. Let me pray for you. If you are ever in the Seguin area, come visit us on Sunday mornings at 9 or 11 a.m. Or you can just download our app and receive our weekly messages right to your phone. 
Just text CC Seguin to 77977 and click on the link that you receive. May the remainder of your week be enriched with God's favor and blessings.